Do you need answers? Is there a need for a true spiritual and prophetic encounter with God? Join Dr. Candice Smitherman and various relevant prophetic voices from around the world. Become enlightened as we walk down the true road to an authentic spiritual encounter. You will experience the glory of God with Dr. Candice and the Glory Road Show. Welcome to the Glory Road Television Show. I'm your host, Dr. Candice Smitherman. And I'm excited because I've been sharing with you in some prior episodes about doors of opportunity, about testing for the promise. And now we're stepping into some really good teaching about how to sustain the promises of God in your life. I know some of you are just hoping and wishing and praying for sustenance. You've stepped into the places that God has called you to, but you don't want to see them Go by the wayside. You want to be on top of where God's at and do what he's doing and sustain that promise. You want to have continued resources to do the call. I've often noticed in my own life, God will begin to open up great doors. But at the same time, there's always a fear that once these doors are open, how will we sustain? How will we keep this up? Well, listen, the same God who opened those doors is the same God who's going to sustain them. All that needs to happen is your faith levels need to be high enough so that that sustenance will continue. There's some secrets to sustenance of resources coming forth. Woohoo! I can feel the people getting excited today. I can feel the temperature rising because you want to know how to sustain the blessing. God has given you the blessing. How shall we sustain it? So let's get into scripture right away because I want you to understand some of the keys to sustaining the promise. First off, we got to understand that you have to remain in an attitude of completeness, fullness, and wholeness. Nothing missing, nothing broken. All right. And so as we trot along, we're always concerned because every time we take a look with our natural eyes, we see something broken. But the fact of the matter is, everything broken we see has been redeemed by God. That's his way. His way is the way of redemption. So that means that all broken things have been redeemed. And they've been redeemed eternally, okay? Which means they were redeemed before the foundation of the world because Jesus decided that he would go to the cross for us. And when he went to the cross and he shed his blood, was buried, resurrected, and ascended... Resurrection means he overcame sin, death, and the grave. He bought back for us everything that was lost in the fall. But now ascension, being ascended, and we the church ascended with him, means now we live in the inheritance. Whoa, whoa. You live in the inheritance. Yes, I know that that's amazing. And I know you're thinking to yourself, no way, I can't believe it. Yes. You live in the inheritance. And so you've got to properly position yourselves from those realms of prosperity so you can stay in that place of the ascension. You want to make sure you're properly positioned to be there, not because of what you do, but because of what Jesus did. And then by faith, you grab a hold of that and you run with it. Now, in Psalm chapter 84, we read, uh, about from King David, about how he, no matter all that King David faced, was able to sustain. And he sustained because of his relationship with the Lord. The relationship with the Father is the most important thing. And, and I just, you know, I just feel in the spirit right now, you know, somebody feels like their relationship with Father God is broken. Now listen, if you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, already, then all you need to do is to repent or ask for forgiveness of your sins that you feel guilty for, that you feel as though you're not clean because of them. You need to come to God and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness that I might be in position in relationship with you that we might go forward and accomplish that which you called me to. You just simply ask for forgiveness. So, so, and listen, I'll walk you through the prayer right now because maybe somebody's watching and you, you're not saved. Never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Listen, now's the time. Guilt, condemnation, fear, shame. If you're experiencing any of those things, we're going to put it aside right now. 
In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for my friend. Just repeat this prayer after me. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 says, If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. So, Father, I thank you. My friend right now who's watching humbles himself. Just humble yourself. Say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me, Lord Jesus. Father, I feel guilt, shame, fear, anxiety. I don't want this anymore. Lord, break that off of me right now. I confess. I'm overwhelmed. I'm, I'm looking for love in all the wrong places. I have misused resources. Confess whatever that is. I've slandered somebody. I have harmed someone. Just confess it right now because God's breaking it off. And as you confess it, the Spirit of the Lord is going to come in and touch you right now. Spirit of the Lord coming in and touching you right now. God is breaking off every stronghold of the enemy. As you repent, every stronghold is broken. Father, I thank you, Lord, every stronghold broken right now in Jesus' name. Father, just revive my friend right now. Come on, I see revival in your spirit. Just revive right now. Just revive right now. Open up your mouth. Let a tongue come forth. Father, I praise you and I thank you right now. Lord, I thank you for stirring my friend right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, I feel somebody being stirred. Lord, I thank you for that fire. Listen, he's cleansing you. Holy fire right now coming upon you. Revival fire to move you forward. Woo, hallelujah. And then just give him a celebration. Give him a high five. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you because of what you did. I can have a relationship with the Father. I can be with my dad again, with your father in heaven again. See, when Jesus died, he died to do one thing, reconcile us to the father. Why? Because he found that that relationship was the most important. It was the most important to him, and he wanted all of us to have it, and he knew he was the sacrifice that was going to make that happen. So, Father, I thank you right now for healing coming to those that are watching. Every stronghold broken off you in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, I know you feel lighter right now. You feel lighter. Ooh, hallelujah. I can tell you feel lighter right now. Lighter in the spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I praise you and I thank you. Just raise up my friend right now. Come on, just raise up. Just get out of bed and start walking right now. I want you to begin to start walking. Woo, hallelujah. Begin to make uh, a declaration. Come on, we declare and we decree truth. Declare and decree today. And this will be your last day of mourning and your first day of joy. You're going to go forth in the mighty name of Jesus. You're going to declare and decree his beauty, his majesty, all that he has done for you. And God is putting things in order right now. Alignment right now in Jesus' name. God, I thank you for putting things in alignment for, for my friend right now. Listen, I see somebody's home is completely in disorder. But guess what? That disorder is only a reflection of the disorder in your soul, in your temple. Right now, be healed in Jesus' name. And begin to start putting things in order right now. Glory, glory, glory. Whoo. Hallelujah. Order coming right now in Jesus' name. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I just had to take that break for a moment and just pray you all in. I had to pray you in. I had to pray you into the courts of the Lord because that's where David remained, was in the courts of the Lord. Come on, I'm talking to somebody right now. Psalm chapter 84, verses 1 through 7. The uh, King David shared with us how he gains his sustenance for everyday living and for the promise that God had given him about being king. Whoa, hallelujah. And it took a long time before he was anointed king and he stepped into his position. Psalm chapter 84, how amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul longeth, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out. For the living God. Woo! The sparrow has found a house and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young, even the altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in the house of the Lord. They will still be praising thee. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them, the ways of him, who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. Woo! Whoa! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Thank you, Jesus! Now listen, I am so excited about this. See, 
when, when King David said, my soul longeth, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. Now remember, this is sustenance for your promise. That word courts is the word chatzer. It, it means enclosed by a fence. It means um, to be surrounded by a stockade. In other words, he's saying, listen, my heart longs for the courts of protection. The courts of the Lord, the walls, the stockade of God in his heart is my protection. Whoo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Then it goes on and says, Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. This is verse 5. In whose heart are the ways of them. Now listen, that's the ways of God. The ways of God are, go are our ways. If it's God's way, it's our ways. Remember, his ways are higher than our ways. So what is God's way? God's way is his mode of action. It's how he does things. See, I know you've got a strategy. But listen, God says, I have a strategy. You need to come in alignment with my strategy. Man devises his, his, uh, his ways, but God directs his heart, okay? So we put things into order how we think they should be, but God, when we draw into him and into his courts, makes it a reality for us on how we can step out and go forward. Woo, I'm feeling the presence of God right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to share this broadcast with a friend because somebody needs to know and understand about the ways of God and sustaining the promise. So listen, the ways of God are a causeway, a terrace that exalts and rises up. Mm. The ways of God are ways of redemption. What this means is that we are ones who are blessed and gain our strength when we understand that all things have been redeemed. Come on. I know you've been waiting for redemption, but I'm here to tell you the good news. It was already redeemed the day that Jesus shed his blood, died, buried, and resurrected, overcoming sin, death, and the grave, and ascending where he properly positions us with relationship with the Father that in such a way that we are the kings and queens, the ones that have received the inheritance. I know, share this with a friend right now. Come on. All right, so the ways of God are our ways now. And we want to make sure that we properly position ourselves to walk in the ways of God. Yes, and God's ways rise us up because that word ways means to exalt or rise up. Whoo, hallelujah. So now when we rise, we rise to the place of being seated with him. And we do warfare from there. Come on. I know you've been kicking the devil down in the earth realms, but listen, your war is from your seat in the heavenlies, which means there is no war at all. You've already defeated that enemy. You just look straight down and say, you're underneath my feet. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, let's read a little bit more. The word tells us that passing through the valley of Baca, when we pass through the valley of Baca, we will make it a well. Whoa. The Valley of Baca is the way of weeping. When you pass through mourning, you pass through weeping. Now, instead, a pool. All your tears are going to fill a pool to overflowing. It's a pool that's going to bring forth fruit. Come on, God just turned a deficit. He just turned a mourning into a joy, into a gladness, into a filled pool. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the rain comes, it fills the pools. He makes wells and he makes pools even in the Valley of Baca, even in our time of tears and loss and mourning and grief. And I know somebody out there is grieving right now. And listen, God says your tears are redeemed and the wells are going to come forth. And from those wells will be pools where fruit will burst forth and in that bursting forth, what we're going to see is life and life everlasting. Whew, I'm getting excited. I don't know about you, but listen. How do you sustain the promise? Get in the courts of the Lord and know the facts about being in this stockade with God. Now, the courts of the Lord are the courts of your heart, your soul that's connected to the Father. 
Don't let anything sever your relationship with the Father. Remember, Jesus came to buy you back to have a relationship with Dad. So don't allow anything to come in between that relationship. Mm -mm, nothing. No person, no finances, no job, no neighborhood, no need for anything should come into messing up that connection you have with the Father. Jesus died to reconcile us and make us tight with him. Don't let no lie of the enemy, no lies of the enemy to come in there, kill, steal, and destroy, and rob you of your relationship with the Father. Jesus bought it back so that you would be raised with him and in that abiding connection, that connection of inheritance. Woohoo! I'm getting excited. High five right now. Now listen, I want you to stay tuned because we're going to come back and I'm going to share more about how to sustain the promise, understanding the ways of God. Have you ever wondered how you can accomplish God's plan if you aren't actively entering into His heavenly realm? Dr. Candice Smithyman's new book offer will open your eyes to a new realm of spirituality, Heavenly Portals, where eternity impacts your past, present, and future. It's time you unlock the keys that'll change your life. Go to www.candicsmithyman.com and get a bonus masterclass CD set with your book purchase at www.candicsmithyman.com. Back on the building, it was three bars that had to be torn down and demolished right here in Jacksonville, 33,000 square feet. We ended up obtaining that property at the grace of God. But it took us a year and a half to build it out. Yes, come on, I'm talking to somebody right now. A year and a half to build it out. We had a lot of loss along the way. I mean, tremendous loss. But we also saw the angelic hosts, the hosts of angels, more of them than more of us that had come to take this property and stand with the Lord. But this scripture is very important because my husband and I and our congregation had to go from strength to strength or else we never would have finished the completion of the project on the inside that ended up being a beautiful sanctuary, multi-purpose room, a cafe, kids ministry, all of that on the inside. It was truly amazing. We learned so much about the supernatural moving into this place, not only fighting demonic forces, but seeing angelic hosts. I write about this in my book, Releasing Heaven, Creating Supernatural Environments Through Heavenly Encounters. You can get a copy of that on my website at CandiceSmithman.com or go to any major bookseller. But I share about the story of how we took this property. My husband, myself, our whole congregation, we went from strength to strength. In order to sustain the promise, we had to run at that level of strength. Now listen, strength to strength, every one of them in Zion appears before the Lord. Now that word strength to strength, okay, that word strength, in the Hebrew is the word kail. It means the glory of the resources of the army. Whoa. And we were an army of God taking over that bar here in Jacksonville, Florida. But also, kail, so it went from strength to strength, from kail to kail, from the glory of his resources, of his wealth, of his virtue, force, goods, might, power, valor, all of that. We had, we went from strength to strength. That's what you want if you want to sustain a promise. You need to go from strength to strength. Come on, I'm talking to somebody right now. So you're starting to get weary. God has properly positioned you and he's given you so much. But listen, get in the courts of the Lord and build your strength. God said it shall come to pass. He needs you to run the race and not grow weary, but continue to move forward in an attitude of redemption. The ways of God are the ways of redemption. All things are yours and all the resources of heaven are yours. Now, that word kail is also broken down to the word cool. It means to twist or to whirl, to dance in pain, okay? Uh, to fear, to wait. It's a type of travailing and shaking. It is a shaking that brings forth the glory. Come on. Anything that is worth taking, you're going to shake for. Anything that God says, I want that land for me, you're going to get into that place of dancing and whirling and shaking and travailing because God says that's yours and he's going to take all of my strength through you in order to have that thing. That's how we felt about our bar in Jacksonville turned to be a church. It was truly amazing. 
truly amazing. So how do we do it? We danced in praise. We danced. We had set prayer times every single day. We danced. We praised. We worshiped God. All the while, we worked. Mm -hmm. We worked. We worked the day. The floors, putting the floors in, putting the ceilings in, putting new toilets in, putting carpet in. I mean, it, everything you can imagine. Brand new cafe, everything. We worked and toiled and God supplied every resource. And it was the most amazing journey I have ever taken. When you're taking land that the enemy owns, how do you go in and capture the flag? Come on, we just capture the flag and put it down there. We had to have strength to sustain the promise because it was a long, long haul, very long haul, not only to have our first service, but to continue on as well. It was long. It was long. And so some of y'all have been working. Some of you have been working in ministry. It's been a long haul. There's been a push. There's been a press. But listen, I'm going to speak to your weary soul right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Rise. Get up. From strength to strength, I speak it over you. May the valley of Baca turn into pools that are so filled, wells that are overflowing. Come on, why? You're getting into the place, the courts of the Lord, as you begin to see him bursting forth new opportunities, new resources, new uh, increase in every area, and you will multiply, you will dominate, you will subdue, you will replenish, just as he told Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 1. Anywhere that God is, we see these blessings. Okay, woohoo, I don't know about you, but I'm preaching myself happy. Listen, share this message with a friend because this thing is going to help you get through long standing in ministry. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 is where I want to go now. Why? Because along with entering into the courts of the Lord and understanding the ways of God, we have to also understand to have pure and simple devotion to the Lord. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. So the Apostle Paul gained progressive revelation as he was the, became an apostle and he began to start moving out. So when we read the New Testament, we're reading progressive revelation of understanding the ways of God, understanding eternity, understanding faith, understanding these aspects that are vital for us as the members of the kingdom of God, kings and queens, to be able to go forth and rule and reign in the earth today. And so the Apostle Paul spoke uh, to the church at Corinth, and he said, listen, he says, I'm jealous for you with a godly jealousy. He said, I promised you to one husband to Christ, so then I may present you as a pure virgin to him, which means one that is consecrated to God, but one that is faithful to God. Come on, a pure virgin, consecrated, holy, faithful. But I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Now listen to me. So what's the key here? Sincere and pure devotion to Christ. That's what the Lord wants us to have. Let's just to have sincere and pure devotion. See, when you're in the courts of the Lord, who are you there with? You're in the courts of the Lord. You're in the stockade of God. Your heart is in the right place to know him, to have simple and pure devotion, to keep that simplicity on him will then keep a simple focus of completion of the project and sustenance for the promise. See, we need to know and understand that we need to have a heart that is centered on God. Center means your soul and your spirit. Spirit man first, soul, mind, will, and the emotions, and your body, tripart being, focused on the Lord. When we come to that place of focus in him, then we begin to see the manifestations of God coming forth. The manifestation of God is Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. It's what he told him in the beginning before Adam and Eve came to kill, steal. I'm sorry, before the serpent came to kill, steal, and destroy Adam and Eve's Garden of Eden experience. But guess what? We've been redeemed and we're back in the Garden of Eden. I know you look around you and you see disaster before you. You see confusion. You see lies. You see all kinds of craziness happening. But I'm here to tell you you're back in the Garden of Eden. Why? All things have been redeemed. So now how do you live in that space and place of redemption? You live in the courts of the Lord with uh, when you're in that place of pure and simple devotion to the Father. Mm -hmm. This mind 
is on pure and simple devotion. See, Jesus ran the race well because he had pure and simple devotion. In Matthew chapter 4, when he was tempted by the devil, what kept him from going astray? Very end, he said, worship the Lord and serve him only. Kept his heart in the right place. Come on. The enemy's saying, look over here. Do this. Do that. Come here. Come that. See? See, if you'll do this, you'll fill up that place of lack. Come on. You tell him. Talk to the hand. Because basically what's happened through all of time and, and the redemption that's taken place through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you're now full. You're complete. You're whole. Shalom, peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. From strength to strength. Kail to Kail. You're now in this place of pure and simple devotion to the Lord. Now, your promise will be sustained. I declare and decree it today. Lord, I thank you for those that are watching. Put them in order with you. Center them on you, Father, in the courts. Pure and simple devotion. Jesus knew it. That's what took him to the cross. I, I speak right now an impartation over you that every distracting force, every confusing force, every lying force, every spirit of lies, confusion, death, right now be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit of anxiety, fear, depression, every spirit of lack and poverty right now be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Come into your place of wholeness and fullness. It's the, it's the truth of the word of God. You're already whole. I know you see brokenness, but I'm here to speak to you right now. Break in the mighty name of Jesus and get on with the truth. The facts might say it, but the truth says that all that brokenness has been turned to wholeness in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we just glorify your name right now. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah to the King. Glorify your name, Father, because you have taken us on a journey that Jesus paid the price, and now we are just called to walk out this redemption. Woo, hallelujah. I want you to reach out to me at CandaceSmithman.com. I want to get to know you. I have a school of the supernatural. You want to learn about the supernatural power of God, glory, and healing, and faith, and angels, all of these kinds of things. Reach out to me. I also have my Glory Road community. I want to meet you on Facebook. It's a private community. It's I put a lot of stuff on my page, but this is separate. The Glory Road community are my peeps. I get a chance to deposit into them on a weekly basis. So go to gloryroadcommunity.com to register today. I want you in that special group where we get to connect for sure. And I get to mentor you and encourage you. All right. It's awesome to be with you. Come back and see me again on the Glory Road. Have you been blessed by the Glory Road experience? Dr. Candice would love to be able to connect with you, as she does with all of her covenant partners in a special way. This covenant connection is called the Glory Road Community. By joining this connection group, you will be able to be empowered, enlightened, and spiritually coached by Dr. Smithyman in a more personal way. Go to register today at www.gloryroadcommunity.com. You've been watching The Glory Road with Dr. Candice Smithyman. She can be seen all over the world. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, plant a seed in the ground. You can support by going to CandiceSmitherman.com. Remember, all donations are tax deductible.